Hello, my name is Sushma, and today we're going to talk about breast implant illness, uh, what breast implants are, uh, how they can make you ill almost invariably, and what to do if you have breast implant illness. So we are going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the types of breast implants, the history of breast implants, what happened over the last several decades, we're going to talk about how they are implanted into your breasts and for what reasons. And then we're going to talk about uh, how to look at illness that stems from breast implants. So um, we'll talk about something called explanting as well, which is the removal of breast implants. So uh, what happened in, in the United States in the early 90s was 1992, the FDA approved breast implants. And these implants were silicone implants largely, uh, and they were so toxic. There, was, there were so many lawsuits from women who got sick from these implants that the FDA removed them, banned them from the market. Um, and then in 2006, December of 2006, guess what the FDA did? They reapproved these implants that were previously so very toxic to, to women. Uh, the implants that were approved were the saline kind and the silicone kind. And they're sort of covered in the outside by textured or smooth surfaces, uh, sort of like gummy bears. Um, and, and these were deemed to be very, very safe. But implants are simply not safe. And the reason implants are not safe, folks, is you're putting a foreign body into your body it to which your body is mounting a huge, huge immune response. And whether it's implants, whether it's a root canal, whether it's the Mirena IUDs, whether it's a pacemaker, whether it's a titanium rod in your bone, whether it's bullets that you got in the Second World War and, and couldn't be removed, every single foreign item, foreign object in your body is going to create an immune a counterimmune response and the way the body's immune system works is it's trying to get this object out and so it inflames your body you get fevers you you get high levels of uh, cholesterol your your homocysteine levels go through the roof uh, your thyroid gets revved up and then eventually it gets trashed your adrenals your body's in fight or flight mode and your body tells your adrenals to release cortisol uh, your immune system over amps itself trying to uh, uh, to build to make uh, uh, blood cells white blood cells to fight this um, enemy in your body and a, and a huge antibody response is launched the other thing that happens with these implants is they get infected so if you have an implant that goes in uh, many of the saline implants have permeable valves so body fluids can get into these um, implants which do not have their own immune system and so bacteria viruses fungi can grow inside these implants and create all sorts of infections within the implants and the endotoxins from these then leak out slowly over a period of time some women feel the effects of an implant almost right away and some women feel it a little bit later but almost invariably these implants tend to degrade in um in between three and seven, eight years, uh, you get cancer. There's a, the American Association of Plastic Surgeons has said there's, uh, I think, 722 cases of women with cancer and some 22 deaths. If they're saying that, it's probably 10 times that. The FDA is still not taking these implants off the market as they're deemed to be safe. This while women are getting all sorts of autoimmune diseases, all sorts of diseases that are inexplicable, uh, whereas they were previously very, very healthy. Um, so women are going in for explant surgery, which means taking out the implants. And I just wanted to say, when you take the implants out, make sure you get the capsules, which is this scar tissue that's formed around the implants out, because that's where there are a lot of uh, toxins. There's a lot of pathogens. And those are the those are the scar tissues that you really need to get out when you get the implants out. So you need to be very, very careful. It causes cancer of the immune system. And it causes several, several systems, uh, symptoms. Uh, I was uh, reading about what 
plastic surgeons have to say <coughs> about breast implant illness and their position is women are imagining it uh, the symptoms are very vague uh, women are hysterical and hey those shiny apples in the store uh, are shiny because there's silicone around them and you eat them every day and so therefore silicone is not a deadly substance folks this is silicone that is ingested through an apple the same as the vaccine logic when you eat ingest mercury your elementary canal is lined with metallothionines that help you excrete safely bind and excrete the mercury out. But when you inject the mercury intramuscularly, very, very bad things happen because the mercury, the toxin is bypassing your immune system. And implants have 40 different toxins, all sorts of heavy metals, and we'll go implant by implant and go over what sort of toxins they have. Uh, the saline gets infected. The silicone causes its own toxicity. The implants have heavy metals, all sorts of rubbers, plastics, they're estrogen disruptors, and they act upon the body in different ways. So women get a variety of diffuse symptoms. All they know is they feel terrible. So what the body is now doing when you have an implant is it builds these capsules or scar tissue immediately after implantation around them. And this is the tissue that uh, slowly becomes toxic, pathogenic, carcinogenic, um, causing acute pain and inflammation. I wanted to read you um, some of the symptoms, and I'll go through those as well. Uh, but don't expect a plastic surgeon to tell you that implant. Plastic surgeons will cite bullets that World War II veterans got that are lodged in their brains because they couldn't take them out. Well, in that instance, the if dislodging the bullet kill the person, then they're better off with an immunological disease. But if you have implants in your breast and that they're making you very sick, it is relatively safe to take them out again and become healthy again. Um, the plastic surgeons say the FDA said they are safe. How many people have heard the FDA say Vioxx was safe, vaccines are safe, um, you know, a hundred other drugs that killed swaths of civilization were safe. So don't go too much by what the FDA thinks about implants because the FDA banned them and then in its vis wisdom, it re-permitted the manufacture and uh, installation of implants into, into women. Um, uh, there are plastic surgeons who implanted these implants into women and they're coming in the back door and now doing explants. So there's, there have been some 80,000 explants done uh, by women who, who got seriously, seriously sick from them. And so plastic surgeons are making it at both ends. So I would recommend that if you are going to a surgeon, at least go to an ethical one who never did any implants in the first place and who understands that implants are, uh, if not criminal, a very unethical thing to do to a human being because they are almost invariably guaranteed to cause disease in your body. And it's not just implants. You, you, you uh, implant any foreign object into your body, you're going to have similar reactions to a smaller degree or to a greater degree. And the question is, do you want to live with that? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Uh, let us look at a case report before we go into symptoms. And this is um, uh, a professor, a doctor of rheumatology, uh, Division of uh, Rheumatology, Monmouth Medical Center, and he has written a case report on a woman who had uh, what he defined as breast implant uh, illness. So this is a 34-year-old white female who had multi-system illness. Five years after, so when she was 29, she got these breast implants. Uh, five years later, she had this multi-system illness uh, after undergoing cosmetic breast augmentation with silicone gel-filled breast implants. Her main features were, the symptoms she had were repetitive photosensitivity. She had to wear glasses, dark glasses all the time. Persistent polyarthritis, uh, both occurring for the first time within six months after her surgery, she went to the doctors. Doctors said, nah, it's not the implants. 
The differential diagnosis of her treating physicians did not include device-related toxicity because they were advised that that device is not toxic and therefore it must not be. Uh, there's a lot of fraud and corruption that went down in the remanufacturing and reapproving of these implants, but that's another, that's another post. So this athletically active 29-year-old white female was on no medications prior, underwent cosmetic surgery, breast enhancement, with the insertion of silicone gel-filled breast implants. Six months after surgery, and I'm reading this, while vacationing in the Caribbean, she developed a raised erythematous pruritic rash on the interior and posterior, so the front of her chest, the back of her chest. 20 minutes after continuous sun exposure, the silicone was literally reacting with her within her with her immune system and producing the rash. Uh, the rash was accompanied by pain, extreme stiffness and swelling in her hands, wrists, wrists, neck, knees, ankles, and feet. The rash resolved after 10 days of sun avoidance. So now this woman who, who could get vitamin D from the sun is, can no longer go into the sun. And once she avoided the sun, the rash went away. But what persisted were, were the joint symptoms, severe pain and aches in her joint. There was no history of insect bites, fever, um, uh, but she, she had headaches, lymphadenopathy, sore throat, uh, gastrointestinal complaints, or or in lower respiratory systems. One month later, she developed extreme fatigue. One hour of morning stiffness, almost like a fibromyalgia. No wonder why women get more fibromyalgia. All the, the IUDs, the root canals, the implants in their bodies will cause an autoimmune response. Myalgias in all four extremities, paresthesias in her feet and hand, that's weakness, and the first of six dental extractions because of newly developing and progressive periodontal disease. And you wonder why. Your adrenals are sending out cortisol. Cortisol is telling the body there's an emergency. Put out sugar. Sugar causes cavities. Uh, stress will cause, therefore, periodontal disease, uh, among other things. Over the next four years, she developed dry eyes, night sweats, all the symptoms of menopause scalp and hair loss, you know, like a hormonal loss, easy bruisability, so she had bruise easily, chest pain, weird chest pains, her chest felt heavy, vague ab abdominal pains, telly, tell, I'm I always have troubles with this, but um, upper anterior chest, spider veins on her, tele telegiectasis, cognitive dysfunction, memory lapses, um, and problems with word recall and name recall. She had repetitive episodes of identical photosensitivity after brief exposure to sun pruritus, and even without the reappearance of her reappearance of her rash, multiple enlarged lymph glands bilaterally, um, both sides of her body. During this interval, she underwent multiple rheumatology and infectious disease evaluation, and it all came out nada. And that's what happens. These women have multiple symptoms, they don't feel good, they can't get out of bed, they have insomnia, they have body aches, they go to the doctors, they get MRIs and scans and blood tests and everything appears normal. Some markers might be a little bit off, some inflammatory markers, but everything looks normal. So guess what the doctors say? You guessed it. You're hysterical. You're a woman and you don't have any problems let's put you on antidepressants or anti-anxiety meds. And so in particular, uh, and, and none of those tests fail to yield a specific diagnosis. In particular, repetitive anti-nuclear antibody tests and infectious serologies were negative. Treatment with hydroxychloroquinone and oral steroids afforded no improvement in her condition, didn't help. Additional physical exam findings five years after her augmentation surgery included uh, postural muscle strength, uh, no tight skin. These were additional symptoms. No tight skin. Was, skin was loose and flappy. Tenderness or to palpation of multiple anterolateral ribs. So her ribs became sensitive. Probably had infections there. Um, a 20 cc fusion in the left knee, swelling in her right hands and wrists. Um, and a Shermer test is for dry eyes, 
yielding five millimeter of tear formation after five minutes so she had dry eyes minor salivary gland biopsy was normal and so she didn't fall into any particular disease category uh, specifically but she did have only a hundred white cells in her knee fluid um, uh, she had a good mucin clot no crystals and negative culture in her fluids chest x-ray mammography emg zkg so all unremarkable Biopsy of several auxiliary lymph nodes revealed chronic, chronic inflammation with foreign body giant cells. Now we're getting to the truth. And clear droplets that were consistent with silicone. So they found silicone in her lymph nodes. Guess what? The silicone was leaking out. And it could be silicone, it could be saline, different problems, different diseases. Shortly thereafter, the patient, this patient, smart patient, finally underwent expla explantation. It's called explantation, the opposite of implantation of the non-ruptured implant. So the implants were still whole. They were not ruptured. She took them out. She took out the capsules attached to these implants. And during the next 11 months, guess what happened? Most of her symptoms resolved. And all the symptoms and signs disappeared of her prior disease. Um, over the past 12 years, that is, 19, 2006, uh, this is this article was written uh, last year, so over the past, past 13 years, uh, following the termination of the 14 and a half year long FDA ban on silicone gel filled implants, which extended from 92 to 2006, two and a half million women, that's two and a half million women who have put their health, their life, their everyday well being at risk have had these devices inserted into their bodies, but whether it was for cancer or reconstructive surgery or accident, or whether they were women wrestlers or beauty contestants, you name it, uh, two and a half million had breast implantations uh, over the past four years, for the probably more now, more than 100,000 of these women have removed, permanently removed these um, implants, uh, explanted them, to alleviate a number of ailments comparable uh, to the systemic illness manifest, manifested by this patient and the illnesses manifested by uh, 400,000 other re recipients 26 years ago when the, when the FDA banned them. Um, and there was a lot of litigation then and there is a lot of litigation now too and there will continue to be litigation but in the meantime, you've messed up your body. Breast implants are now known to be a slow delivery system from day one. They start to damage you from day one. So it's not a matter of whether they damage you, it's a matter of when the damage will reach a tipping point to the point where you cannot bear it. They produce micro dispersion of silicone or saline to multiple or infected saline, as a matter of fact, to multiple distant sites beyond the local breast environment and axillary nodes, which are the, your lymph nodes in the breast area. This in turn initiates multi-system disease whose subsequent chronological development simulates a dose responsive curve. Systemic silicone toxicity and saline tox toxicity, even when ster sterile when placed in these implants, it's no longer sterile when you take it out caused by over two dozen disruptions of the body's biochemistry. So the symptoms are dispersed uh, depending on what your weak point is. But in general, I would put them into five major categories. One is metabolic syndrome, which is fatigue. You're tired and you don't know why. You're like the energizer bunny before the uh, implant and now you feel constantly fatigued neurological, which is cognitive dysfunction, uh, the endotoxins from the bacterial infections, uh, the immune re reactions which inflame your brain, uh, the silicone and, and the saline that disperse, the microdispersion of the rubber, the silicone, the plastic into your brain will cause neurological and cognitive dysfunction. And the endocrine function, you're, a lot of these women get thyroid nodules, their uterus gets fibroidal. fibroidal. Um, they get their gallbladders removed, they get their pituitaries um, addressed. 
Uh, so they get organs removed for disparate symptoms when the underlying cause never got addressed. So these are endocrine disruptions that the implants cause. Uh, one, two, three, fourth is immune system suppression. So these are the women folks who get uh, mono all of a sudden, or they uh, get Lyme disease. They had this Mirena IUD for years and years, and all of a sudden they have, this is because your immune system gets messed up. It gets suppressed, it gets inflamed, and opportunistic infections then have the ability to infiltrate your system and cause infectious diseases, for which you get more antibiotics, more antifungals, which destroy your gut biome, which further uh, suppresses your immune system. You know that 90% of your neurotransmitters are made by uh, your gut bacteria in your gut. And so now you have these women with compromised immune systems who have opportunistic infections uh, and whose root cause is not addressed. Instead, they're given um, anti-infectives, which further uh, bring them closer to death and disease. And then you have these gastrointestinal and digestive disorders because it causes leaky gut. The toxins cause your gut and blood barriers to separate, your blood and brain barriers to separate. So a lot of the things that sort of happen to children who are vaccinated and autism happen to women who have implants in them because they are bypassing the body's immune system when they install these foreign bodies into your breasts. Um, this, um, this professor, this a doctor of rheumatology further says, the reoccurrence, and I'll quote him, of this public health crisis has been fueled by manufacturers, research fraud, blatant fraud, FDA ineptness, I would say corruption as well, um, faulty informed consent. These women, especially the younger women, are, uh, are told that these are absolutely benign by their plastic surgeons who say it's FDA approved, apples have silicone in them, et cetera, et cetera and you will feel good, and you'll look beautiful, and people will love you more. Uh, uh, let me tell you, people will not love you more because you have breast implants. Um, you won't be able to sleep on your belly. You'll have these balloons squishing into you. Um, and just the massive destruction to health is not worth putting anything implant-like into your, into your body. Um, proprietary manufacturing secrecy. Under the name of proprietary manufacturing secrecy, they have not disclosed the ingredients that went into this manufacturing process, uh, but there's a lot of analysis that we can go to. Misleading advertising. Remember how they said Roundup was safe as table salt? Uh, this was oh, 20, 20 years ago, more, 30 years ago. Uh, misleading advertising. Physician indifference. Uh, you know, they get money making making the implants, they, they make money taking out the implants, why would they not love it? Aberrant research methodology, we, we, we've not invested enough in post-marketing analysis. The FDA, nobody has researched these effects simply because there's not money to be made in that. And above everything lacks congressional oversight, but what's new? The great thing here, folks, is to educate yourself. Um, so now let me go through some of the symptoms off. Um, uh, let me first see if there's any any questions. Uh, no questions. Uh, no questions. No questions. No questions. Okay, great. So let me go through uh, all the symptoms. Yes, uh, uh, Marlene, you're absolutely right. Breasts, big and small, are beautiful. Um, and no man will love you less or more because you have larger or smaller breasts. And a lot of it is uh, taking pride in who you are, uh, being yourself, loving yourself, nourishing yourself with real foods, uh, you know, real raw butter, real eggs, real meats, um, and not doing extreme and toxic things to your body uh, because God made you, nature, the big spirit made you in an image uh, that's very, very lovable. Um, so, so women everywhere, especially younger women, especially women who are having reconstructive surgery post-cancer, you're in this small window where you're in pain, uh, you're under enormous pressure, 
your breasts have been taken off, especially if you have cancer, and all of a sudden uh, you have lost your sense of identity. Make no decisions when you're in that circumstance. And, and their walks in the plastic surgeon, uh, they have this entourage of, of chemotherapists, radiation doctors, surgeons, and then the plastic surgeons uh, to recommend all these um, assembly line procedures to you. Learn to say stop. My mind's not working. I'm in pain. I want to take time out from whatever is happening to me to make this decision. Uh, read up. Always, always doubt your decisions by going to the internet. So if you really want breast um, implantation, go to the internet and plan breast implants bad. And review the literature. Anytime you want to make a decision, if you want to buy the stock of a company, say you want to buy Facebook, uh, go to the internet and say why Facebook is a bad investment. And that's how you learn about an investment, about a health decision. Um, and that gives you the time to step back and think, do I really want this uh, toxic, toxic stuff in my, in my body? Okay, so now we're going to go to um, the symptoms of uh, breast implant illness uh, that you hear a lot about from women. Chest tightening, because, gosh, the implants are located on your chest. Pleurisy, which is, uh, the, so the capsules get infected and inflamed, and you're, uh, the outer membrane of your that your pleura gets infected, low pulse, you feel like you're dying, lymphoma, lymphoma is a cancer. Um, there are 40 toxins in these in these implants, um, and so of course you get there's heavy metals, heavy metal toxicity, extreme anxiety, depression, lack of energy, extreme fatigue. That your thyroid gets shot, your pituitary and adrenals get shot. You get insomnia, burning eyes, dry eyes. You gotta wear dark glasses to deal with the sun. You don't have restful sleep. Uh, women are up at 3 a.m. in the morning where previously they said slept like logs, and yet every test is normal, but they're still complaining. These women then get tested for HIV because those are similar symptoms. But this is a cancer of a, you get cancer of the immune system. So every system in the body is being attacked. Um, a foreign device implant or pacemakers, tens, or any unnecessary um, devices in your body will, or implants, dental implants for that matter, will cause these kinds of uh, symptoms. Women have their body parts removed, thyroid, gallbladder, uterus, etc. Uh, some women complain they feel like they've aged 10 years. They look old, they have bloated faces. Immediately after explantation, the bloating in the face disappears. So it's not, it's not fat loss or weight loss, it's just water loss. They were so um, inflamed. Um, there's women who have implants and who have pregnancies have postpartum depression that never goes up. They don't want to wake up, shower, they get body rashes on their stomach, chest, armpits, a uh, whole body, whole body sometimes. They get alopecia, hair falls out in bunches, they get Epstein-Barr, mono, Lyme disease. Women get a lot of Lyme disease and these are diseases of toxicity before their diseases of um, infections. The pathogens are actually cleaning up your mess. Hair loss, dry eyes, um, dry skin, mouth, hair, weight, extreme weight gain or extreme weight loss, easy bruising, so slow healing of wounds. You have a temperature intolerance, very high, very low. They get oral thrush, so they become very insulin resistant. They become hyperinsulinemic. They have high blood glucose levels coursing through their bodies. They get night sweats. Um, estrogen progesterone imbalances, the hormones decline early, they get into early menopause, they have swollen and tender lymph nodes at all times, especially in the breast area, underarms, throat, neck, groin, tingling or numbness in the arms and leg, burning pain, so there's a, there's a lot of different things uh, that happen. Um, muscle twitching, uh, burning pain, um, uh, burning pain around chest walls of breasts, cold and discolored hands and feet. Uh, many women experience foul body odor because these things are literally festering in their, in their chests. Muscle twitching, vertigo, fevers, dehydration, frequent urination, chronic neck and back pain. Back pain is very common. Uh, nail changes, your nails crack, split, there's slow growth, 
skin freckling, pigmentation, it becomes either dark or, or you get white spots um, called vitiligo, or an increasing papules, which are flesh colored raised bumps or skin tags. You get swelling around the eyes, you have premature, uh, premature aging, decline in vision or vision disturbances, a very slow recovery after any activity. So these are women who are very fit and athletic. Many of them did CrossFit, ran marathons, and, and now they're, they are winded just from climbing the stairs. They have slow muscle recovery after activities because their liver and kidney are damaged. They have dysfunction trying to detox um, all the toxins constantly. They have gastrointestinal and digestive issues. They have food allergies and intolerances. Uh, they have smell or chemical sensitivities. Uh, they get continue to get these persistent infections, viral, bacterial, colds, coughs, flus, and they reoccur. And now they're taking flu shots for all this, and, and they're getting worse. Reoccurring sinus infections, yeast infections, UTI. Uh, they clear their throat constantly. They cough a lot. They have difficulty swallowing, choking feeling, chronic inflammation. They feel like they're dying, headaches, depression, hypo or hypothyroid symptoms. Hashis, scleroderma, multiple sclerosis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, these are all signs and symptoms of extreme toxicity from breast implant illness. And you could, you could take the word breast implant and replace it with root canals. You could replace it with marina IUDs. You could replace it with other devices, pacemakers, etc., that are put into your body. A lot of these women get cancer, and in particular, there's a breast implant-associated cancer that women in the previous trench, before they got banned, got, and this is called the breast implant-associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. This is a cancer of the immune system, which is caused by the um, breast implants. It's, it's diagnosable, and it's diagnosed, found in the fluid collection between the implant and the capsule that's in the seroma, the serum there, or in a nodule in the capsule. And the physical signs of this are effusion, um, swelling, pain, inflammation, ulceration, various others. Um, and in a, in a overwhelming symptoms in a majority of the patients are that the seroma is delayed, delayed seroma, there's persistent swelling and pain, uh, in some conditions, patients have skin changes like rashes, lymphoids. So these are the precursors to, to basically uh, lymph, uh, blood cancers. Um, in May of 2019, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons said this has caused 722 cases of cancer and 20 deaths worldwide. Uh, make that 100 times more uh, because, as you know, uh, they, they have a huge incentive to underreport. So you're looking at uh, anywhere from 2,000 to 20,000 deaths from this cancer and hundreds of thousands of women who are very, very sick from this. Uh, after implants, the sooner you get the implants out, uh, the quicker your body recovers, the longer they've been in. Obviously, the longer it's going to take you to recover from them. Uh, but women report sleeping like a log. Their sclera, the whites of their eyes, which are gray or, or red, turn snow white and sparkling. They feel rested. It takes up to a year to heal from all the damage that's been done, but eventually you will heal. Let's talk a little bit about the metal toxicity in the implants. The allergan natrile saline per the FDA has Tin, platinum, arsenic, lead, manganese, zinc, phosphorus, uh, the Cyantra, silicone one has antimony, arsenic, barium, beryllium, bromine, cadmium, cesium, copper, germanium, lead, mercury, uh, nickel, platinum, um, thallium, tin, zirconium. Some of these have no business being inside your body. This is from the F uh, FDA site, by the way. The mentor memory gel, silicone, antimony, arsenic, uh, uh, vanadium, titanium, platinum, mercury, all sorts of toxic metals. So all of these have a lot of toxicity in them, and they're almost guaranteed to give you a disease. If you have cancer, if you have Hashimoto's, if you have MS, if you have 
any of the chronic fibromyalgia, any of these chronic, chronic diseases, first explore the things that are the foreign objects that are implanted in your body, um, the vaccines that you have taken or take and have put aluminum and mercury into your body. And your first order of the day I would recommend is detoxification because until you detoxify, it's like a, trying to empty a leaking boat while you're rowing. You're rowing from one shore to the other as fast as you can. You have a leaky boat and you're throwing out water, but you haven't fixed the leak. So you can do all the Gerson therapy. You can do all the good food and eating and chemo and radiation you want. But if the toxicity remains in your body, you're not going to get better. You're going to get worse. And so I would strongly recommend considering um, explanting or at least um, consider uh, the, the pros and cons of implantations before you implant them and do a little bit of research uh, before you look at uh, breast implants and you might uh, be happy that you that you did that. So here's to your good health and please post your questions below. Thank you.